Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. We're gonna talk today, we're going back to economics class, you know, the class none of us paid attention to. We're gonna talk about what is a recession? Listen, the reason why we need to know this is because the definition is being changed. If you haven't uh, watched what our president did just recently, he changed the actual definition of recession. It's important to know the factors that create a recession so you can see ahead of time where we're at. Now, personally, I believe we're in a recession, type one if you agree, type two if you don't think so. But let's dive in right now. So a recession is significant. It's widespread and prolonged. It's a prolonged downturn in economic activity. A common rule of thumb is that two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product or GDP growth indicate a recession. However, more complex formulas also are used to determine recessions. Economists at the National Bureau of Economic Research, or NBER, measure recessions by looking at non-farm payrolls, industrial production, and retail sales, among other indicators. The NBER also points out that there is no fixed rule about what measures contribute to information to process or how they are weighted in our, their decisions. That's an actual quote from them. A downturn must be deep, pervasive, and lasting to qualify as a recession by the NBER's definition. Since some of these qualities may not be evident when a downturn first begins, many recessions are called retroactively. Look, first, you need to understand, a committee is who decides this. Also, you have to realize they don't announce a recession until months after it's already began and the same uh, way when the, the a recession ends. Last time in, in the late, uh, what is it, 2010, they announced that it was over about six months after it was officially over. So let's talk about understanding these recessions. Since the Industrial Revolution, most economies have grown steadily, seeing few economic contractions. However, recessions are still common. Between 1960 and 2007, there were 122 recessions affecting 21 advanced economies, according to the International Monetary Fund. In recent years, recessions have become less frequent and shorter in duration. A lot of this is because of monetary stimulus or the lack thereof from central banks. A decline in economic output and employment that recessions cause can become self-perpetuating. For example, declining consumer demand can prompt companies to lay off staff, which affect consumer spending power and can further weaken consumer demand. Similarly, the bear markets that often accompany recessions can reverse the wealth effect, suddenly making people less wealthy and further trimming consumption. Since the Great Depression, governments around the world have adopted fiscal and monetary policies to prevent a run on the mill, or sorry, a run of the mill recession from becoming far worse. Some of these stabilizing factors are automatic, such as unemployment insurance that puts money into the pockets of employees who lose their jobs. Other measures require specific actions, such as cutting interest rates to stimulate investment. Recessions are most clearly identified after they are over. Additionally, investors, economists, and employees may have very different experiences in terms of what uh, of when a recession is at its worst. Think about it as uh, frivolous spending, right? Um, uh, we all need to eat. So grocery stores see uh, recessions in a different way, whereas people spend more money on necessities and less money on gourmet foods and things they don't normally eat, right? Like finer cuts of beef. Whereas spending and travel and leisure, they're gonna see the impact much longer and deeper because this is discretionary spending. It's spending that people don't need and they really don't need it, you know, in, in certain restaurants and certain travel uh, types. So they're gonna see that even more. Now let's talk equity markets. These often decline before an economic downturn. So investors may assume a recession has begun as investment losses accumulate and corporate earnings decline, which we've been seeing lately. Even if other measures of recession remain healthy, such as consumer spending and unemployment. Conversely, since unemployment often remains high long after the economy hits bottom, workers may perceive a recession as continuing for months or even years after economic activity recovers. So what predicts a recession? While there's no single surefire predictor of a recession, an inverted yield curve has preceded each of the 10 U.S. recessions since 1955. That being said, not every period of an inverted yield curve was followed by a recession. We've seen that just recently. But I think that the more and more we see that inverted yield curve, the closer we are to recession. Now, when the yield curve is normal, short-term yields are lower than long-term yields. This is because longer-term debt 
has more uh, duration risk, right? For example, a 10-year bond usually yields more than a two-year bond as the investor is taking a risk that future inflation or higher interest rates could lower the bond's value before it can be redeemed. So in this case, the yield goes up over time, creating an upward yield curve. The yield curve inverts if yields on longer dated bonds go down while yields on shorter term bonds go up. That's what we've been seeing recently, right? In recent years. The rise of near term interest rates can tip the economy into recession. The reason why the yield on long term bonds drops below that of short term bonds is because traders anticipate near term economic weakness leading to eventual interest rate cuts. Investors also look at a variety of leading indicators to predict recession. These include the ISM Purchasing Managers Index, the Confidence, uh, or sorry, Conference Board Leading Econ Economic Index, and the OECD Composite Leading Indicators. And again, the Conference Board Leading Economic Index is really important because conference boards, they see a lot of what's going on in real time. So when you see their sentiment turn, things are not gonna be good uh, for much longer. So then, what causes recessions? Numerous economic theories attempt to explain why and how an economy goes into recession. These theories can be broadly categorized as economic, financial, psychological, or a combination of these factors. Some economists focus on economic changes, including structural shifts in industries, as most important. For example, a sharp sustained surge in oil prices can raise the costs across the economy, leading to recession. Think about it. When your gas prices go up, you drive less. It's just a fact. Some theories say financial um, factors cause recessions. These theories focus on credit growth and the accumulation of financial risk during good economic times. The, contradiction, or sorry, the contraction of credit and money supply when recession starts or both. Um, other theories focus on psychological factors such as over-exuberance during economic booms and deep pessimism during downturns to explain why recessions occur and persist. Keynesian ec uh, economies, or sorry, economics, uh, focuses on the psychological and economic factors that can reinforce and prolong recessions. The concept of a uh, Meninsky moment named for the economist Hyman Mininsky, who names these people, uh, named uh, after him, combines the two, two uh, sorry, combines the two to explain how bull market euphoria can encourage unsustainable speculation. I think the parents of Hyman were speculating that that name was good. I think they failed. Now, last, let's talk about recessions and depressions. According to NBER, the U.S. has experienced 34 recessions since 1854, but only five since 1980. The downturn following the 2008 global financial crisis and the double dip sums of the early 1980s were the worst since the Great Depression and the 1937 to 1938 recession. Routine recessions can cause the GDP to decline 2%, while severe ones might set an economy back 5%, according to the IMF. A depression is a particularly deep and long-lasting recession. There is no commonly accepted formula to define one. During the Great Depression, U.S. economic output fell 33% and stocks plunged 80%. And unemployment hit 25.8% during the 1937-38 to 38 recession. Real GDP fell 10% while unemployment jumped 20.9%. That is incredible, right? Well, what about recent recessions? Well, the COVID-19 pandemic and the public health restrictions imposed to stop everything. The depth and widespread nature of the economic downturn caused by that in 2020 led the NBER to designate it a recession despite its relatively brief two month length. In 2022, many economic analysts debated whether the US economy was in a recession or not given conflicting economic indicators. Why? Because it was so short and so fast, it was a snapshot of, of real economic activity. So you couldn't actually report it because you didn't have long enough to actually feel its effects. There was so much money pumped into the economy immediately you couldn't really, really gauge it. So what happens in a recession? Economic output, employment and consumer spending drop in a recession. Interest rates are also likely to decline as central banks such as the US Federal Reserve Bank, not federal, not doesn't have any reserves, 
cuts rates to support the economy. The government's budget deficit widens, tax revenues decline, while spending on unemployment insurance and other social programs rise. So how long do they last? Well, the average U.S. recession since 1857 lasted 17 months, although the six recessions since 1980 averaged less than 10 months. So what's the bottom line? A recession is significant, widespread, and prolonged downturn in economic activity. Recessions are commonly characterized by two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product, unless you're the President of the United States, Joe Biden, of growth, though there are more complex ways to assess and classify downturns. The unemployment rate is a key recession indicator. As demands for goods and services fall, companies need fewer workers and may lay off staff to cut costs. Laid off staff then have to cut their own spending, which in turn hurts demand, which can lead to more layoffs. Since the Great Depression, governments around the world have adopted fiscal and monetary policies to prevent recessions from deepening. The question is, are you thinking that we're in a recession? If you think we are and you haven't been told yet, you need to start acting like it. This isn't the time to go big and buy things you can't afford. It's time to pay off debt, get ready to crush it because a lot of people don't understand where we are. Hope you got something out of this. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.